Getting served their eviction notice. <laughs> Welcome. My name is Travis Wolf. We're located in Palm Valley at the Bee Leaf USA Bee Sanctuary. The Bee Sanctuary is our place. It's essentially a honeybee hospital where we bring our rescued beehives in order to revive them. Uh, it's located here in wonderful and beautiful Palm Valley. Uh, Palm Valley is an agriculturally zoned area of San Diego County. It's roughly about one mile wide by about seven, eight miles long. Uh, it's known as Indian Country because there is about five different Indian casinos within about two, three miles of here. And so uh, it's very interesting land, very awesome and, and very energetic land. A uh, great place to raise honeybees and a great place for bees to um, reestablish themselves after being, you know, relocated from one place to another. And this serves as an awesome environment for them to recover far away from people but close enough to all the plants and the foraging that they need in order to be strong and uh, healthy. Let's go see what's going on with the bees. And just to give you guys a little heads up of what we're doing today, uh, we're going to be doing some feeding first off. So we're going to be mixing up some sugar syrup for the bees. Uh, we do a one to one 50 uh, 50 percent sugar, 50 percent water. After we feed the bees today, uh, we will open up an owl box. Bees are always finding fun places to go. So we'll open up an owl box to get ourselves that experience of, of rescuing those bees. All right, so what we've got going here is we are basically making honeybee food. Uh, we're essentially creating nectar for the bees and it's a substitute to the natural nectar that we have. Here in Southern California, we're going through a dearth, which means that we do not have the moisture that's going to be feeding the plants. Uh, so the bees can't naturally find as much food perfect example as you can see right here of all of this that was once blooming a couple of months ago we only got a couple of little guys going so a lot of these bees need additional foraging in order to stay healthy what I'm making right now is considered one-to-one -one. Yeah. it's like uh, one part sugar one part water yeah so my name is Marco I'm the rescue manager with Bee Leaf USA. So my role on the team is to handle a lot of the uh, the infestations that people have in their houses. And what my goal really is, is to try and turn that infestation into something that we can, you know, turn it into somewhat of a treasure. It's a small scale, <laughs> uh, you know, operation for feeding bees. So we're essentially filling up these five gallon jugs with water that we're gonna dump a bu bunch of bags of sugar in them. And then we have feeders in the hives and we will, you know, put the sugar water into the hives and the bees will treat that as, as like a source of nectar and they'll be able to use it, um, store it for themselves to give them, give them energy to go, to go and, you know, pollinate new crops. Basically, and part of the reason why we do this and Travis touched on it, you know, getting, getting rescued colonies from, from, you know, infestation habitats is, is slightly different from buying bees from like a bee seller. Um, you know, dealing with genetics that might not be ideal. The bees might, might be feral. So we, part of that revival process with the rescue, relocate, revive is to, uh, you know, revive the bees, get them to, uh, get them on the same track that, you know, a commercial bee hive would be on. Yeah, you can buy those shirts on, on our website, and uh, yeah, the link's all over Bee Leaf USA. We found that, you know, if you just if you just put them in these barrels, put them in these jugs, you can just roll them around and you don't have to cook it. It takes probably about 30, 45 minutes. So, we just come here, start rolling them around, do some other work, and then keep rolling them around. By the time we're, you know, getting ready to leave, the, the, the bottles are ready to, to throw into the hives. Cool. Oh, that's so nice. Awesome. So now we're going to be headed over, now that we've done our sugar and whatnot, we're going to be headed over to check out the owl box. The owl box is going to be what we're going to demonstrate for you guys to as, as a relocation. Let's check it out. Bands on the frames kind of just preparing for uh, what's about to happen. This is going to be uh, the rubber bands. It, it helps hold the honeycomb into, you know, 
um, this area right here, then the bees will be able to just attach their comb to the to the sides and, and use the rubber bands to hold it in place. So what we're doing right now is we're uh, we're lighting up our smoker and the reason we use a smoker with honey bees is because it replicates the uh, environment or the forest and everything around them is burning. Uh, that would signal to them that we need to do everything in our power to survive and keep the species alive. So what that means is the bees are going to go to their honey and they're going to go to their nectar and their resources and they're going to basically gorge themselves and eat as much as they possibly can because the chances that that burns and they're not going to have access to that again is very likely. A lot of people think it makes them lethargic because you know maybe the lack of oxygen or something but it actually they just become hyper focused on eating and after that they become uh, forged and full and enter a food coma just like any other animal you know when we when we get to that space it's a uh, night night time so honeybees do this like process called bearding and bearding is when it gets too hot inside of the hive the bees are actually going to hang out on the outside of the hive it typically happens in the afternoon uh, so it's kind of like honeybee happy hour where they're just doing their thing uh, on the front of the hives all right guys so we're suited up here today we got bees in this here owl box, and we are gonna transfer the bees from this owl box to this beekeeping box right here. The goal of this is to move all the honeycomb and put it into this beekeeping box, into the frames. Then we're gonna find the queen. We're gonna cage the queen up and put her in this cage so she doesn't take the bees with her if she tries to fly away. I have no idea what it looks like inside of this owl box, mm -hmm. but we're gonna crack it open and see. Heavy. I can already see a ton of nectar inside there. What? Ah, look at that. So that's all honey right there. Beautiful. With the heat of the day. You know, it's like, it's like, what is it, 9 a.m. right now? <laughs> the wax just breaks right off. So that's all honey right there. Nectar. No sign of the queen. She's likely going to be, you know, in the middle of the box. Yeah, so we're surrounded by 50 other beehives. They're going to get pretty uh, aware that there's there's been a hive cracked open. Honey's, okay. honey's coming out, so we want to try and work. Wait, wait, These wait. bees are much nicer than I thought they were. <laughs> yeah, are, you, are you getting any? Uh, I don't see any swarm cells or nothing like that yet. No. Yeah, so we want to, we can always feed back honey to them. Right. Which is fine, just in case we see the queen. So right here, this next piece is going to be eggs, larva, brood, bees that are about to hatch. Look at that. Yeah, so that's all there. That's all the larva that's that's about ready to go. You'll see some uh, some little white white dots. That's uh, that stuff that's about to be incubated. Into the next piece. So we're trying to pour them off into that okay. side there, if you can see. So they kind of go away from the smoke. We'll take a look so inside yeah. inside of the box. So right now we're framing up uh, some of the pieces of brood. Brood is technically baby bees. You guys ready for another piece of brood? These are cells. Each honeybee is gonna, and throughout her entire life, is gonna fill up one of these cells entirely. It's one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey, and her entire life will amount to that much uh, nectar turning into honey and being made on her account. So, to put it into perspective even larger, it takes, for, for us to build one of these, it takes roughly two and a half gallons of nectar. So in order to build the infrastructure that holds this, you know, we, we have a whole, we have an entire, uh, three to four times the amount of work that goes into it just to build the, the case or the container for it. Then at that point, once the bees have already built it out and there's been generations upon generations, it's basically going to take one bee their entire life to fill up that whole cell. So if you look at, you know, this chunk of honey right here that we pulled off 
you know, this is, I mean, the equivalent of probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, this is like 200, three, 400 bees possibly that it took to build this and not building the comb, but just simply building or storing the honey to get soft. taste test here it's what we call a honeycomb spear popsicle whatever you want to call it i call it breakfast mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. this is what we do it for people mm -mm -mm. fresh the freshest yeah oh, my vitamins and minerals for the day no that's called organic it's not looking like she's wanting to show herself too much <laughs> Uh, in here. Hmm. So you're not getting bit at all? No. Yeah. So one depends. bee creates all this whole colony. The entire mm -hmm. thing. That but yeah, that, that the she is 100% the mother of all of these bees. There may be one or two, three, four that decided, hey, I like this colony better and snuck in. But for the most part, bees don't let other bees into their family based off of the smell of them. We've successfully rehomed this hive from the owl box into this box. Now, while these bees settle themselves and get reoriented to the new home or mansion, if you will, we're gonna head on over and do some feeding. Check it out. Like, uh, beekeepers in general are, are kind of like dumpster divers. Because we just take we take uh, we take trash from somebody's house and, and turn it into treasure, you know. So just kind of got that mentality of like reusing, recycling. So yeah, there's some freaking eggs, honey, larva. That's a good frame. These girls, I don't really have to do too much of a, an inspection on them. I know they're rocking and rolling. Uh, different types of nectar. So right, right through here on the bottom, you can totally see that we have a dark nectar that is gonna be buckwheat or avocados. Avocados are starting to bloom, so it's probably buckwheat. Um, everything else is either gonna be some of that sugar substitute, uh, wildflower, or, or anything else, but the bees will cluster that actual nectar in various positions because it holds a different nutrition for them. So when the colony needs, you know, uh, vitamin B5 that's in the buckwheat, they'll end up using that. Now, that's just an example of what they would use. I'm not saying they're doing the B vitamin thing, but that's how they organize it. It's kind of like a medicine cabinet for them. detrimental to the colony by any means. Right. Yeah, in a sense they'll get, they'll, they'll have an opportunity to, to utilize more space. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, so we finished up with our feeding. We're actually gonna be heading down to San Diego to go look at some of the hives that we've already revived and reinvigorated different neighborhoods with. So we'll see you down there. We just finished up out at Palma Valley. We got our bees fed, we checked on the bees, uh, we got our rescue finished, but now we're headed up to Cradle to check on the rooftop honeybees up here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have to do some climbing, but it's a great place for urban bees. So uh, we're, we're just getting some of our equipment up here right now, but 
we're on the rooftop here of Cradle. Cradle is a prenatal uh, testing clinic. What they do is they basically develop ways uh, to do non-invasive prenatal testing. Uh, it's a little loud up here, so I'm gonna try to project as best as I can. But this is our beautiful space that these bees are gonna be foraging year round. One of the beautiful things that we have in an urban environment is manicured gardens. And that means that there's always something in bloom and that the landscapers are conscious of making sure things are blooming. Now, a part of the Bee Leaf USA goal is to get those blooms to be pollinator friendly plants. So we actually go to some of these buildings and provide them lists of different plants to use. That way it's helping to uplift all of the pollinators all around. Right here we can see our wonderful beehives. Uh, we're gonna do a quick peek on the bees, check on them, make sure that they're doing all right. Uh, but ultimately, this is what happens at the end of a live rescue and relocation. You know, we do all the work out at Palma and we do all the, the work at the bee sanctuary specifically to bring the bees into a situation just like this. Somewhere where the building folks actually get to connect with the bees. And we do that via uh, about once a month. We'll bring up a group of two to three people, maybe up to five. Uh, we'll open up the hives with them. We'll show them that a true business and a true uh, team is, is literally operating together just like the beehives up here that are highly efficient by teamwork they can be highly efficient downstairs one of the most fun things about this project is right there we have a live stream camera now that live stream camera feeds right into the lobby so that every time someone walks through those doors they're reminded of the hard work that these bees are doing on the rooftop as I think I said earlier, the uh, CEO, Tristan Orpin, was instrumental in making this happen. He's a visionary in the sense that he brought these bees here and I asked Tristan, I said, what is our purpose? Why, why are you personally getting involved with this? And he points out to all these other buildings and explains to me, he says, look, we have to set an example. We, should, we need to be setting an example and leading by example, not just saying and doing things, but you know, we installed these bees before there was even employees to the company. It's hard to see, the other one's doing a little bit better. But these are blueberries. Wow. So let's pick out some of these blueberries. They're literally so delicious. Yeah, I know that we have a handful of them over here. So we had you know, almost 10 people up here mixing their hands in the dirt. And that's important to us. It's important that we all get to connect with nature because that's a part of what this program is. is it's everybody understanding that part and parcel, we are nature. You know, they say you are what you eat. I don't know if I'm a blueberry, but I'd like to be because they're awfully sweet. Yeah, try it, it's so good. Oh my God. Right, yeah, yeah, right? I'm not even kidding, they're so delicious. Delicious. Give me a second, I got strawberries over here too. I'm, kidding, I'm telling you, they're, they're golden, they're so delicious. Let's pull out all of the ripe ones that we can. And as an employee of this place, you can see how how nice it is to know that your your boss, you know, that your the executives of the company literally care about the planet enough to do these things. And it, it really is a testament to Cradle by them choosing to put beehives up here because it does so much. It means a lot when you bring in beehives before you even hire employees to a company. It's just a testament to where they're taking the business, where business as a whole is going, and what corporations can and should be doing. To help the world. These are, these are what are called flow hives. And this is technically a observation beehive. So what we're able to do with this, so we'll cook them for us too, just to make sure these bees don't think they're stealing anything from them. But ultimately, you can see deep inside here that the bees have actually begun storing their honey and nectar deep inside this entire box. They didn't make that comb, right? This comb is plastic. It's a very special type of comb. And what it is, this it's called a flow hive. And what a flow hive does is it ultimately allows us to non-invasively uh, extract the honey from the bees. So there's little bits of tiny, tiny, tiny bits of nectar all through here, and the bees will be filling that full of nectar. Now, when that gets full, bring out the back side. You can kind of see there's bees filling up all of these little cells. So on either side, we're gonna have the same exact kind of activity cooking. This side's got a little bit more, but ultimately this is a space for a spout. This little spout comes out. Right up here, we have a little space for some keys. So what we do is we put a key right inside there, pull this guy out, put a key inside there, and when we do put that key in there, we actually twist it and it cracks the comb. So it will literally 
break the inside of the comb. The bees on the outside don't realize it, but all of the honey runs down to this channel. It comes right out this little spout. We have a little tray that sits right here and allows us to drain the honey out of this hive without ever harming the bees, without ever bringing any sort of negatives to the bees. And that's the benefit of these flow hives is that we never actually have to harm the bees through the rescues or through the honey harvesting process. That said, we do manage the beehive just like any other beehive. We have to get in here and inspect it monthly, uh, sometimes more during the peak season. And you know we, that goes for all three of these. Last year, I think we pulled about uh, about seven, about eight pounds or eight gallons of honey. Um, so that's just about 96 pounds of honey, almost 100 pounds of honey out of here. It's so often that we as humans try to intervene and say, we want this to happen. And you know what? I would have loved if this plant got a little bit bigger. But guess what? The strawberry decided to take over. And maybe that's Mother Nature's plan. She would rather see us creating more food. We've got to be happy about that. Um, we have all these nice daisies coming through. We had no idea. This thing is huge. I had no idea it was going to get so big. In fact, it was not never supposed to be that big. But here we are, letting life find a way. And when we do that, it's, it's pretty magical what, what Mother Nature will show us. Thank you everyone so much for spending the time with us today and watching what we have to offer. On top of that, you know, I just want to show, show you guys this strawberry real quick. Perfectly organic, perfect strawberry. And literally every one of you guys can have this strawberry. The magic of this strawberry coming from right here and, and with the help of these bees, everybody can be engaged in this nobody is too little too small too old too young fits any budget we can save the earth guys you know with that said i think i might okay. <laughs>